Ladies and gentlemen, okay. Mike Bach. <laughs> Um, I've given you two papers here. That, uh, did everybody get those? One is from, uh, it was a report on the Dayton Daily News written by Kevin <coughs> Kelly, who's the Dean of Education at UD, and Frank De Palma, who was the superintendent uh, at Centerville Schools. And uh, they're writing a report here about the new report cards and the fact that uh, most schools are going to be downgraded. Okay, so right now the statistics would have it that uh, Kettering and Centerville would actually get a grade of B. This is going to be hard for those communities to deal with. Uh, and, and Oak would get the grade of A. Oak is the only school in the whole county right now that would qualify for a grade of A. So these people who are our professional um, leaders in education think this is a good thing, that we need to have harder tests, we need to have a tougher curriculum, we need to raise the bar, and that's going to make things better. Their theory that they're going on, which has really been proven to be wrong, is if you just demand more, <laughs> that somehow that's going to result in getting more. And there might be some truth to that, but there's a lot of not truth in it. There's already a lot of schools that are not making the requirements that are we having made now that we have for schools. The idea of simply demanding more doesn't really solve the problem of, of how to improve education. So. Um, they're working on that. Now, last um, spring I put together a book, I was going to bring a copy of it, it's called um, Public Education in the Year 2030. And so that's the topic of the little talk we're going to have this evening, and hope you'll have some questions on it after I make a few comments here. I uh, taught for 30 years, I taught math in West Carrollton, and then I, then I also taught in some other, a couple other schools. Um, and so my point of view comes from being an experienced teacher, working in the public schools and day after day seeing what was going on in there. Of course, that was almost 10 years ago. <laughs> and the situation now has changed some because testing has really taken over. My conclusion after teaching for, for 30 years is that reformation really is not what we need. We need something much more dramatic and different, which you might call transformation. Okay. Now. How you will get to that point where you can actually transfer in public schools is a great question because um, trying to change anything that's so big and so unwieldy and has so much money behind it is very difficult to do. But part of that is by having a vision of the future. You know, if you could make a school district anything that you wanted it, and you had 17 years to do it, 17 years in the future, what would that school district look like? I mean, do we, does anyone have a vision of the future? And the only vision we were given to us by people such as the Dean of the UD and the retired superintendent, the only vision that's being given to us is more of the same, except done um, you know, more sternly and with more vigor. <laughs> they like to use the word rigor. Well, when we're talking about transforming the system, we're looking at really what's the basis, what's the foundation for the system. So in the letter that I wrote, I was going to send this into the university, or it sent it into the newspaper, but I didn't. I'm saying that, you know, when you really look at what the guiding principles of our school district, or our whole school system is, basically there's three things that we seem to settle on after no child left behind. And the first is the purpose of public education can be accomplished via the transmission of a standard curriculum. It's all about getting the curriculum right, it's all about somehow pounding this into kids' heads. And the second thing is the merit of schools, you know, how good is your school, can be determined by looking at the test results. Okay, so now teachers are going to be judged this way too. You know, you have good, good test results, you must be a good teacher. You know, you have good test results, you must be a good school. And then the third thing is what the, the dean of education here was saying, is to aim higher, which is what they're saying we need to do, means to uh, improve test scores. So that's where it's laid out there for us, and there's a lot of reasons to think those principles really don't make any sense. Those principles really forget why we have schools to begin with. If you go back and look at the you know, history of where does school, you know, what have we been wanting schools to accomplish? We've always had one of much bigger goals than that, you know, but somehow those have been lost. You know, we want to build solid and productive citizens. You know, we want to have them so they can be full participants in their representative democracy. Uh, we want the people to be independent thinkers, self-directed learners. 
We want them to show a true understanding of the world in which they live. You know, I wanted them to develop habits of thought that will develop good judgment. Now, none of that is found upon an objective test. None of that is found upon a curriculum that you're trying to transmit. So suddenly we have a whole different way of thinking about what we're really trying to accomplish in schools, and that's been put upon us. So the principles by which we're, we're building our schools on now really are really don't make sense. And if we look in terms of the year 2030, you know, what, what, where would we be moving for means that if we're not simply content in just making this better, you know, we can spend a lot of time arguing, how do we get the test scores up? You know, how can we do this so that, you know, the school's teachers can manage their class better so that they're somehow getting more stuff in the kids' heads? You know, that might be one approach. But the other approach is to say, wait, let's step back and think about what we're really trying to accomplish in public education. What is our goals? What is our aims of public education? And this whole idea of thinking about aims of education is something that's been forgotten. And it's sort of surprising to see professional educators simply advocating and endorsing the system as it is. Unfortunately, we have a dean of the University of Dayton who's defending a system that educators really didn't design or create. This didn't come about through, through a really deep understanding of human nature, human development, how do you get people motivated to do their best, how do you, how do you create a system where you're creating really productive citizens. It never came from any of that kind of discussion. It came from state legislatures and state assemblies and everything, but the point is we haven't considered what the purpose of education is in a democratic society. It's a lot more than simply science, technology, engineering, and math. It has to do with creating citizens that are ready to live and participate in a democracy. One of the statistics you never hear is that right now, citizens age 18 to 30 are the least likely to vote, the least likely to participate, and these are the people that have that had the most recent experience in our system of public surprise. How many teachers, and if they talk to you honestly, are saying, we need to be doing something different than what we're doing right now. This is not working. This is not what we might went into education for. You know, this is not what teachers should be doing. The whole idea of professionalism with teachers has really been run over in this whole testing thing. How do we create a system where we have professionalism at a different level? That we're going in the wrong directions based upon the principles we have right now, which are all tied to test scores. We need to move in a different direction. Okay, we don't need to be doing what we're doing now better. That's not the point. The point is we need to be doing something much different. <laughs> we need to move in a different direction. And creating a vision of change is something we should be supporting and encouraging people in education to do. And the well-meaning people that are trying to make the present system work simply are not doing something that in the long run is going to matter. And we need to be supporting a different way of thinking about education. What we need to think about is in terms of how do we create citizens ready for to live in a democratic society, and we're not doing that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.